everybody. It's uh, Wednesday morning and we're out here on the Oceanic track. Uh, finally, I don't know if uh, the guys at Raleigh heard me about helping us out with the water flow, but the water's actually started dropping out here, and uh, which is, it could have come at a better time. We're actually able to get down into hardwood now, and uh, we're actually building a road to get us further back in the track. Uh, we made it, we actually for the last few weeks we've been cutting these little hills that I really don't like to cut the hills because that's, that gives us uh, something to work on when the water does come up. But uh, we still got a little bit of hills left, but the water's dropped. We're getting further back in the swamp where we need to be. You know, Corbett's been out of logs. Turnbull's been out of logs. I mean, Georgetown is screaming for hardwood, and, and we're supposed to be the, the people that feel disordered, and we haven't been able to because the water's been so high. But uh, we're finally getting in there. We're getting into the hardwood and uh, trying to help, help everybody out that helps us. And uh, um, everything's going good right now and I uh, want everybody to know that that monkey's okay uh, his truck's a total loss but uh, but he, he's, he's doing okay he got a he had a black eye the next day and his head busting open but uh, he actually uh, Daniel's uh, granddad passed away a few days ago and, uh, and of course Daniel was out for that Daniel obviously thought a lot of his granddad and, and it had a lot to do with raising him and uh, but Daniel, I just told him to give him to take the week off to do what he needed to do with his granddad. And, and Monkey actually drove the T800 a few days. And uh, we're trying to get him back out here. I think he's, I hadn't heard from him in a day or two because I think he thinks he's got to drive the back. But actually, Daniel likes the back truck. And uh, Daniel said he would drive the back if Monkey wanted to drive the 800, you know, to keep everybody busy until the new trucks get here. So I hadn't got it with Monkey in the last couple of days, but uh, I sent him a text and maybe I'll hear, I'll hear from him and uh, get him back out here because we, we need all the trucks hauling because we're having all the Georgetown more now, being in the hardwood with, with, with the Fulton situation. But uh, other than that, everything's doing good and I uh, hope they uh, hope they don't let the water back loose again no time soon because we're able to get in the swamp where we need to be and everything's doing good. sell nothing when you try to you know, put 30, 40,000 hours on this war slap out. But that tractor there gave us a little bit of grief with the undercarriage. Uh, they had changed the rollers on it. They actually changed the whole uh, lower part of the machine 
and it's, it's, it's usually so long in between our, me buying machines, it's probably seven, eight years, that I didn't know they had changed it, which is my fault, but anyway, they had made it actually a smaller undercarriage, a little bit shorter, lower to the ground, and um, all the older machines had D6D rollers, which are larger diameter rollers than what this new one had. It had the uh, a small roller on it, which the track was, the pad was so close to the slide guard that it actually was cutting the pads in half. Uh, normally we could run, we'll run two chains, and we usually get about you know, anywhere from six to 8,000 hours out of a, the chain, and the pads will last, you know, two or three chains. Well, on, on that particular stomper, Bella Buncher, we, uh, we run it about 65, 6,400 hours, and it had cut all the pads in half. I mean, we're out there with a, you know, 18 inch pad because it's been cut in half. Well, we ended up having to buy a whole new chain and pads, but anyway, I uh, got to thinking about it, so I sold it. And uh, we bought the new product that Smetro's got now, which is the 855D, and it's got a D7 undercarriage, which I wish they would have, have done that a long time ago. That D7 undercarriage so far is doing great. No issues with it. We changed the slides on it. And we had a visit from the uh, Tiger Cat engineers. And I have to say that's one thing that sets that company apart from everybody else. You know, they know they, they messed up a little bit on that last undercarriage. Well, I mean, this machine's got 2,000 hours. They got three units out right now. There's two of them in our area and there's another one down in Georgia. And they actually send the engineers from Canada down here personally to, to look at it, put hands on, eyes on, talk to us about it, you know, is it doing good? Can we change anything? You know, and, and I've never had any other company to do that. And uh, they've, they've always been like that. That's how they got started. They spent two years going around the Southeast talking to people about what they wanted in a tractor instead of somebody just making a tractor and say, you know, this is what you need. They're not like that. So, but it's good for them to come out and it lets us talk to them. We can put a, a face and a name with the product. You know, we have issues with the undercarriage. I know who to call. I know what he looks like. I've talked to him. But, uh, so it was a good visit and uh, I'm glad they came out. Hi, my name's uh, Bruce Vale. I work for Tiger Cat Equipment. We, uh, I work in the 800 uh, series track group and my, uh, Objective of being here is to uh, look at the undercarriage here today, and that's the part of the machine I'm most involved with. Uh, we're interviewing Bobby and, and talking to him about this undercarriage. It's a, a relatively new product for us, and we're seeing how the uh, what the wear patterns are on the uh, chain and, and uh, shoe uh, shoes as well, uh, as well as the performance of the machine. So. Uh, uh, and speaking with him, it's gone uh, quite well, and he's quite happy with it. And then we're just uh, trying to figure out uh, what we do uh, next to make further improvements. That's part of the uh, Tiger Cat story: is getting our engineers out into the field and having a look and seeing what really happens here. So that, that's what we're here for.
Uh, my name was Daniel. Um, I was living my load. Uh, chain come off the saw. Abraham gonna be upset with me about that, but he'll be all right. Uh, as y'all probably know, uh, my granddaddy passed away about two weeks ago on the 13th, and uh, today is his birthday. But uh, kind of, kind of taking that kind of hard. Uh, but uh, I got a, a long ride ahead of me to think about it, keep my mind clear. Y'all just keep me in your prayers and. Uh, Everything's gonna be all right. Good afternoon, guys. We're out here on the Oceanic Track, and uh, I know in some earlier videos we had talked about the history of this track and the Marshall family logging it. And uh, believe it or not, uh, you'll see pictures of us making a road through here. And actually, what we're following is the old tram road. And I'm, I'm guessing when they say that, they're meaning it's the old railroad track where they had the little steam donkeys or whatever them things are, like a little railroad cart train. It's not like a full gauge track. It's a little narrow track that they put right through the middle of the woods. And that's what we're actually following through here. And um, it actually is going to tie back in out to Cane Tut Road if we can ever get through there. It's just uh, a long, slow process. But uh, PM wanted to try to get the road open back up and, and use it because the way we're coming in now, we're having to cross about three or four different landowners. Of course, uh, it's a lot better to have your own road than have to ask permission every time you want to come in and out of your land because of different landowners and they got several different gates up. It's just a bunch of mess. But he wanted to try to fix that road. But everything's going good. The water is uh, continued to st stay down. It's not been rising any, which is a good thing. We're I was just talking with Symmetrio and where he is cutting out this old tram road, we actually found a, a spot back there that's got some big pretty cypress on it and that's really what Pim has been looking for. That's the money tree out here, for us anyway. And uh, the equipment's doing good. I think Justin had a little minor hiccup with his loader today. He had a, he busted a hose and apparently when he changed the hose, he must have overlooked tightening the fitting all the way up and he was loading the truck and I was talking to him on the phone and he kept saying that he had something leaking and he had to stop to get out and he found it. It was just the fitting went tight. So he got that done and uh, everything's doing good. I think we ended up with, uh, I think it was uh, 89 loads this week or something like that. Um, we're getting back up there. If we can get a few more trucks in here, you know, we could get a hundred like we used to because you can see it's Friday afternoon. We got. 11 trailers out there loaded ready to go to Georgetown and we probably got another six or seven loads right here and uh, but hopefully we can get another truck out here we got a new guy that's helping us uh, Robinson Farms and he's really been a, a big help to us because he's got a bunch of trucks and they'll come in here and get loads whenever they can so that's been a big help to us but uh, we'll keep you posted. I head on, I head to the bank now see can we get this little check cash head on home for the weekend back out here Monday. Yep, it'll be another week like this week. It's been, nice been a good week so far. No rain. No rain out here. The water gone down. The water gone down. Try to get it easy for us. You know, I was tired of working that deep water. I know you were, man. And then uh, with this sunlight, this when the channel was mm -hmm. in the water, mm -hmm. God, I mean, it's like you, blind you to you death. You walk in a glass. Good God, that, all morning that sun been killing me. It's killing my eyes. It's killing my eyes. Well, yeah. you finished with this week. Even this week be a different week. Well, I hope so, man. I hope the water don't rise tonight. I don't wanna I don't wanna hear. I don't wanna hear that. <laughs> no, I don't wanna hear that. You know, you can you can work it I can work in a wetland, that don't matter how wet it is. But with deep water, it's hey. nothing you can do about hey, it. Hell, yeah. Because the 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 material we're using, the trees flow. Mm hmm You know? And, and and so you cannot work in the water because when the water get it hot, you put a tree and the tree just move it away and then you cannot keep the road together. Mm -hmm. And and it's just wet and, and there's no water. I don't care how wet it is, you know, I, I can get it. Mm -hmm. But I don't like this with water. Mess you up. Messing my head up. <laughs> I think about it, how I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of more work. It's a lot of more work for everybody. And then you gotta roll the tracks over there too. Yeah. To keep the road together, you know. That is not a piece of cake. You know, 
all everybody ever sees us is out here in the swamp working. We're trying to incorporate a little bit of what we do outside the swamp. I mean, like for example, Justin and his uh, duck hunting escapade, uh, which I heard that all the ducks were safe on, on that particular hunt there, which is, I guess, a good thing if you don't want ducks hurt. But, but I mean, they put a lot of time and effort into hunting it, but hunting ducks, but uh, it's kind of funny to, you know, see them go out there and try it. But we also, uh, Gary's uh, mother passed away I guess a few months ago and uh, he's having to get everything straight around her house and of course the storm hurt a lot of people here but a lot of shingles off and um, matter of fact Justin's still staying with us because of that and it's been four or five months ago but uh but anyway Gary and uh, some of his cohorts was helping him put a tarp over top of their house and uh, I heard it was pretty funny and y'all gonna get to see it what if we what if we go ahead and run and keep it straight with the shingles Straight line right here, and then we'll try to pull everything that way. Y'all need some slats then. Yeah. Neil, get in there. Put the hammer there. I had it a while ago. I'll tell you what, y'all. <laughs> it, it can't be too far. It might be under the tar. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it either. Oh, boy. No, it <laughs> Did you find it? I knew he was a truck no. driver. Cause he had one of them ear pieces on. It might went over the side here. I got out of the logwoods. I couldn't con Gary in to go with me though. Uh, I know it didn't Bruno. walk off. You make her fall. You might got it in the pot. <laughs> and you're welcome to my world. It might have went over the side. I looked over there, I didn't see it. Put, put it down there with screws, DJ. I might have to leave nails sticking up. Um, there's a hammer in my truck. Hang on. Oh. That's one of these other things I can't explain. No, it ain't down there. It's falling somewhere. EJ, is that there to a foot? No, that's one of your foot there. Lower hand marker. It ain't down to here. It'll show up one day. Yeah, it's up under there, probably. It's up under there somewhere. He even fell all up there at the front and he didn't find it. You don't see it, Norm? Nope. He just rode legs and walked off like my bear charge used to, but it always ended up at my brother's house. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, trying to put it on the old man. He's sitting here on top of the hammer up under the tarp. <laughs> the hammer y'all lost? Yeah, you? he's sitting on it. Gary. I can't let y'all blame that on Gary. Y'all trying to... I just know we're going to like the view shop out. I don't believe it. Never <laughs> tell you. I tied myself up in the top of the creek and he pulled it. And as y'all well know, anything that's man-made will break. And uh, I actually, our newest loader, excuse me, it's got uh, about 12,000 hours on it. And when you open close on wood so many times, it wears the metal away. And Justin had a piece of metal that wore real thin and started cracking. And he got down there, he didn't know it was as bad as it was. And he got up there and weathered it up the best he could. But after seeing it, he knew that he needed, we needed to cut that piece of metal out and replace it because it had gotten too thin. And, and what happened, uh, a lot of people let stuff like that go, but if you do, the next time you turn around, the whole grapple is busted all to pieces. So we try to stay on top of it because that is pretty vital, you know, the loader grapple. But uh, Antonio's grapple has got some issues too. So we got Britt Dale that came out, and him and his brother actually, and they came out, and he's a really good welder. And, and he knocked both, got both of them fixed back like they should be. Yeah, today come and fix it, my grapple. He's broke before, so today have a time to come and fix it. I don't want to fall out the wood.
it's Friday today and the Friday is working till 4 o'clock, but I got the other one, other low, and no, not too much good, maybe go to 4 30. Every Friday is coming now, draws 4 o'clock. It's okay. For next Friday, take a, make it a bonus. I'm ready to get out of here. That's as fast as I can. I'm waiting on Justin to come on out so I can find out what he want to do about this bad tire he got on here. Maybe they'll get it fixed up the weekend. I hope at least. You know, here it is Friday afternoon and you know the guys has put in a long week. And I don't know if, if y'all know this, but we're actually driving an hour and a half a day to get here. So the guys are leaving at five in the morning, you know, to try to get here at seven thirty. The truck drivers hauling to Georgetown, they're allowed to leave their house at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Have you seen the corner over here? No, the corner is uh it's straight back over there. Not very far though. No, it's not far away. Because I when I walked over where that road is on the other side of them pines, I walk down because it comes down in the corners and goes that way. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to tell on the map, but don't, I don't think it's that far over there to that corner. No, it's not enough far away. It's it's, uh, it's on this hill here, though, right? Right where I was cutting this today, uh -huh. cross, you can see the corner right cross. So, like right cross to there. It's on that hill there, though, right? No, it's, it's back over there. On this pine hill, yeah, it's back that over there. corner. Because they kind of looking, um, put it straight. This one, this corner is that's over here. This phone turned the wrong way. That's where they had the uh, little. Probably got his phone turned the wrong way. Yeah, it's so when Friday comes, everybody's tired and everybody's ready to go. And uh, of course, Justin's back on the shovel and Darley's having to wait for him to come out. So everybody's kind of anxious to get out of here. But, you know, you can't blame them. I've got one of the best crews out that I know of. Uh, wouldn't train it for nobody. Truck drivers too. I mean, you know, just a good bunch of guys and they work hard. But on Friday, everybody's tired and they're ready to go home, cash the checks, and have a little fun. And I can't blame them for that. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the water's gone down, but we lost a man. I guess these YouTube videos is good in one aspect and bad in another because uh, I got somebody to hijack one of my guys off the YouTube videos and uh, it's Sam, my shovel guy, and uh, he's going to test waters elsewhere, which, you know, he's a good guy. I've been knowing him ever since he's a little boy. Been knowing his dad forever. But uh, sometimes they think the grass is green on the other side, so sometimes they got to go see. But it's got me and Justin. I've got, I'm actually in the loader now. I got Justin on the shovel. So uh, we have got a, a full crew. I mean, this, uh, if anybody lays out, we're in trouble. <laughs> we got everybody maxed out right now, but uh, we're doing fine. We happen to be on a long pool right now, and we brought out the beast, the clam bunk. And as luck would have it, we hadn't needed it in about four or five months. So I figured we was gonna need it here. We bring it out here and something happened to it. It's, it's chugging real bad. It's black smoke just boils out of it. And I've been calling around talking to different people. Of course, everybody's got different antidotes to fix it. But uh, the, the last one that I, that I got made more sense than any of them. There is a little, um, I can't remember what it called, like a compensator valve that's on the back of the fuel pump and it, it meters the fuel going in it. And apparently it's stuck wide open because that's what it looks like. It's just dumping fuel in there. So I've got to run to Conway to um, Tidewater and get a, get one of those valves and put on and hopefully that'll fix that. And uh, if we get that thing running, um, they'll have enough wood out here to run both both loaders. Right now, we're just waiting on wood. And uh, But I'm gonna run and try to get that part, get back here as quick as I can, get that thing running and uh, we'll see what happens. Well guys, here we are at the end of another video. And as always, we can't do it without y'all's likes and shares and 
your support and your comments. We always look forward to your comments. Uh, and uh, just keep us, keep watching this, and we'll keep doing the best to make them uh, as real and as swampy as we can. Well guys, uh, we are thinking about um, making a separate disc of our YouTube videos and you know, if y'all are interested in them, you can buy them and we're actually going to have a lot of bonus footage in there. We're going to have you know, gag reels and just all kind of stuff that's never been seen before and it, they'll be without interruption. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, just leave us a comment and, uh, and we're thinking about doing that and, and if y'all want it, we'll do it. Thank y'all.